photo painting was first introduced in Painter 10 and is a great way to get started with cloning. In this introduction to auto painting, I'll show you how the process works and some of the results which are possible. To demonstrate some of the different types of auto painting, I'm using this panel of four identical flower photographs. This is on the DVD in the Chapter 2 folder. So we go to Quick Clone and we're going to open the Auto Painting palette. So Window Auto Painting. I'm using brushes from the Smart Stroke brush category. Smart Stroke brushes. These have been specially designed to work with auto cloning. You can, however, use nearly all the brushes in Painter and they will automatically be changed into cloners. The variant we're going to use is Acrylics Captured Bristle. I'm going to return the brush to its default settings. Now in the Auto Painting palette, I'm going to leave the option for Smart Stroke Painting unticked at the moment, and we will use that in a later version. There's a large selection of different brush strokes available, as you can see in this drop down palette. And I'm going to use Scribble Large for this first demonstration. I'll put the picture into full screen mode, which is Control plus M, the shortcut, and I'll make the picture larger. which is Control plus plus to use on the PC. In order to restrict the painting to just one area, I'm going to select the rectangular selection tool and make a, sl a selection of the one panel. I'm going to turn off the tracing paper and to start the process off, to start the auto painting off, we press the play button here. There's also a stop button alongside it, so we can stop it at any time. So this stroke is called Scribble Large, and as you can see, it's been applied at random. Remember the brush stroke, because we're going to compare it to the next one. You can stop the process at any time, either by clicking in the picture, as we have there, We'll start it again by pressing play again, or you can stop it by pressing the stop button. We'll let it continue for a bit further. You want to let it get to the stage where nearly all the white pieces are gone, all the white canvas is gone. So that will do, and we'll just paint out those few bits which got missed. Let's try the next one. Move it across there, tracing paper on, rectangular selection tool again. We can pick up that selection and just move it across. We don't have to make a new one. Tracing paper off. Just click on the brush again, so we're back on the same brushes we used before. Now this time we're going to change the stroke to a zigzag. And you will see immediately that different shape that this takes on. These are quite quick to do because it's a small picture and a fairly large brush for the picture size. We'll stop it there. On to the next one. Move the selection across. Tracing paper off. And for this next version, we're going to use the Smart Stroke Painting option. That's the one there. So I've ticked the first one, but I'm going to untick the second one, which is Smart Settings. We're going to run the process again. When using Smart Stroke Painting, the brush strokes follow the lines of the subject, rather than being applied randomly. 
this creates a very different finish to the painting. In all the examples so far, I'm able to choose the size and opacity of the brush. And making it smaller would bring a lot more detail in. The brush size used here, and for all the other two, is size 20, which is quite a large brush size because it's trying to follow the lines of the stalk, whereas the stalk is in fact quite narrow. So I'll finish it there and just paint out those remaining pieces of white. You don't of course have to paint them out, you can leave them in. Some pictures will look good with bits of white left in them. So let's move on to our last example. Activate the brush again. So for this final version, I'm going to tick both the Smart Stroke Painting and the Smart Settings. Let's start that one going. The big difference to the other examples is that this is totally automatic. It starts by using large brush sizes, as you can see here, and gradually changes to smaller and smaller brush sizes, until quite a lot of detail is revealed. It's a bit like the old Kodak slogan, you take the picture and we do the rest. The process can be stopped at any time, but when smart settings is used, the painting will start again from the beginning using large brush strokes. And you can see as it's building up, the brush strokes are getting smaller and more detail is being revealed in the picture. The size it's at now is very similar to the one on the left, the one we made without the smart settings. The brush size is quite small now. You could, of course, manually choose a much smaller size than this, and you'll get even finer detail. The process will stop automatically once it's finished. So it's now finished. So it's now considered complete. So let's compare the four versions in more detail. We'll get rid of the selection first. Select none. And I move it across here. I'm going to press tab to get rid of the palettes. It's going to make that larger. So we can now see the first two examples in more detail. So with these first two, the brush strokes are random, so we've got no attempt to follow the lines of the subject, but simply to, to reproduce it by damming at it. The differences aren't great. If you check in the stalk area there, you can see that's got a, a slightly different texture to that, um, slightly wider, and, and a little bit of detail difference in the petals themselves. Not a huge difference. Moving on to the next one, we can see a greater difference between the random strokes and the ones which follow the lines of the subject. More detail is apparent, but it's still quite loose here where the leaves are because it's attempted to use a large brush on a small subject. So 
So we compare the last two now. And again, you can see in the right hand one that the smaller brushes have brought in a lot more detail. The stalk is much more regular. The details in, in the green here is much more specific. One of the less desirable features of both these pictures are the contour lines created in areas of smooth tone with subtle variation in colour and that's those which are shown here and here and here. I find this unattractive but it can be easily removed by painting over with the same clone brush as I'm doing now. Think of auto painting as a first step in creating a picture rather than the finished product. You will generally need to do further work on it. I'm going to clean up a few areas on this picture here just to show you what I mean. We can see by turning tracing paper on and off where things are. So I'll paint over that leaf, even though this is still quite a large brush for that particular leaf. Paint over it and then paint over the outside areas, in other words the background, and that will refine the picture quite considerably as you can see. Same with the stalk there, if I'm painting outside and painting inside we bring back a lot more detail. And if you'll have a look at the piece down here before I paint it, paint inside and each side. There we are. So we end up with a stalk which is much straighter. May not be what you want but that's an option. So let's have a look at all four of them together. So we can go to window, zoom to fit, and we can see the four different versions of the painting. That completes this tutorial. I suggest you try out some more of these techniques using different brushes. You will find that the results will be very different as you change from one brush type or variant to another.